Okay, guys, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. It's 3 30, very dry all of a sudden. Um, as you know, we're trying to keep a real tight timeline, so we're going to, we have three speakers. It's lasted 20 minutes, five minutes of QA. So if you have a question, blurt it out and let's knock those out. Um, really excited about this first one. Uh, Ross Jensen is an intelligence studies major at Fayetteville State, and uh, he's going through school through the Army's Green and Gold, Green 2 Gold, ROTC program. He's been in the military for 14 years, serving as an infantryman, special operations combat medic, and a special operations civil affairs, affairs team sergeant. Upon graduating, he'll be commissioned in the Army as a cyber officer. So take it away, and thanks for being here. Cool, is the same working? Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, um, my name is Ross Jensen. I'm an intelligence studies major at Fayetteville State University. Brett kind of took all my thunder from this first slide. but. <laughs> My, pro uh, my final project for my introduction to remote sensing class is the war impacts on landscape change in Mariupol, Ukraine. So a quick disclaimer so I don't get in trouble. The views expressed in this presentation are those of the author and do not reflect the official policy or position of the U.S. Army, Department of Defense, or the U.S. government. This is going to be our agenda. So uh, like Brett said, I've been in the military for 14 years. The first seven, I was an infantryman at Fort Carson, Colorado. And then I went, the, the last seven, I was in Special Operations Civil Affairs as a medic as a team sergeant. While I was in Civil Affairs, I was regionally aligned with Europe, and more specifically, the Baltics and the Balkans, where I got to do, go do a few tricks, uh, trips for different reasons. Uh, these are just a couple pictures of my time there. On this picture on the left, this guy right here is my boss, Ryan. I invited him out to do some medical training with us. What I did not tell him was that he was going to be the patient and the target for the operation. And so he showed up and I said, hey, here's your jacket for the rubber bullets and now go run. And so this is him getting arrested by the cop. And uh, he didn't like that. Uh, on the right, this is me giving some blood. The thing I like about this photo, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this guy on the left, he was super excited to be holding this leader of my blood. And he's had this huge smile on his face, looking like a vampire. So I uh, really enjoyed the, spending time with those guys. So when it came time to do my final project for Introduction to Remote Sensing, I started looking at examples that had been done before me for the class. And a lot of them had to do with deforestation, climate change, uh, natural disasters, and other things. And so when I think about the woods, I get really sad. Not because I don't like the woods or the forest, but when I'm out in the woods, it's because I'm being forced to be there. I'm tired, I'm cold, and I'm hungry, and I miss my family due to training. So I want to do something a little bit different and focus on what interests me and my background. So uh, as you guys know, on 24 February, Russia invaded Ukraine under the pretext of a special military operation to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. Since then, 8,100 civilians have been killed as of 5 March, and there have been 14,000 civilians injured. Uh, that's one thing I want to note about this is these numbers are going to be considerably higher when, as time goes by. Russia goes into these areas, and they occupy a village or a town. And when they're eventually pushed out, mass graves are found where the numbers uh, go up exponentially. So these are just an estimation at the time. And as time goes by, these are just going to go up and skyrocket. This is some more information on the war currently. Uh, I updated these numbers yesterday. Uh, something that I found really interesting when I was doing my research yesterday to update this was that you go to different news websites and you get two different kinds of sides of the story. So the article on the top, this is from the New York Times. And they're talking about all the Russian tactics and how Russia's failing. And the article on the bottom was from the New York Post talking about how Ukraine was losing a bunch of numbers. So it's really hard to get accurate information on what's going on over in Ukraine at the moment. And uh, something I want to highlight on this slide is the end goal. What is the end goal for this? Uh, Russia says they want to denazify and demilitarize Ukraine, but they don't say what that looks like. So they, they really haven't said what their end goal is. Ukraine says that they're going to retake Crimea and all the land that Russia took uh, in the 2014 war when Russia invaded then. So both sides have conflicting goals that don't mesh or any way, and there's really no end in, in for negotiations. And um, with Ukraine saying they want to retake Crimea and that land that Russia holds, Russia has said that it's, according to their law, they can use nuclear weapons if anybody goes inside their territory. So. Um, I don't know what happens about this, and I hope this doesn't keep you up at night, but that's just the truth. So when I was looking at the study area for Ukraine, I decided to look at Mariupol, Ukraine. Uh, going to this map right here, so this is Russia on the right. This is Crimea, Ukraine. Uh, Mariupol is important because it connects Russia 
to Crimea, which uh, Russia took in 2014. The only thing that connect, connects Crimea to Russia is this little bridge right here. And so Russia needed more ways to move men, weapon, and equipment between Russia and Crimea in case they needed to. So if they could take Mariupol and all this land between here, they could essentially create a land bridge between Russia and Crimea. What's really, that was the first reason I decided to look at Mariupol. Uh, the other reason I decided to look at Mariupol was the story that goes along with it. Um, Mariupol is kind of like Ukraine's uh, Alamo. So when Russia attacked Mariupol, they had it surrounded by 17 March. They invaded 24 February, and they had surrounded Mariupol on the 17th of March. And so what you had is a bunch of Ukrainian resistance fighters in Mariupol that retreated to this area called the Azovstal Steel Plant, which is uh, right down here, so right, right about that area. And what they had been doing is stockpiling um, ammo, medical uh, equipment, food, water, and um, when Russia kept pushing the town, they just retreated more and more into the steel plant. And the steel plant is massive. It's about three miles wide, and it has miles and miles of tunnels underground. And these resistance fighters held out there for two months until 16 May when they were forced to surrender. So nobody knows uh, really why they surrendered. Um, the, the kind of gist I got from it was that uh, President Zelensky said, hey, we can't resupply you. You guys are low on supplies. We, there's no way we can get you out. It's, it's time to just, just end it. So that's what happened. These dudes held out um, for, for two months on their own, no resupply, and uh, they did a lot of damage to Russia. Just to give you an idea about how, how deadly and catastrophic this was, this is a picture of the steel plant um, during the fighting. So you can see all around there's really not much left. So um, Russia, this was a really big defeat for Russia. Yeah, they took Mariupol in the end, but it took them two months to fight this resistance group that was held up in the steel plant. So uh, it just wasn't a good look for Russia at the time. Here's another picture of Mariupol. Um, one thing that's interesting about Mariupol is, you know, it's got a population of about 450,000. And of that population, about 50% are ethnic Russians. So what the goal was with destroying 90% uh, of this city, I don't know. But uh, just doesn't make a lot of sense. So the research questions I came up with when looking at Mariupol or Ukraine was can Landsat <coughs> satellite imagery be used to measure the damages due to war in Mariupol, Ukraine? And if so, how did the landscape change in Mariupol due to the war? To me, this is important because if we can look into an area and uh, use uh, remote sensing or GIS to determine how much of an area has been destroyed, we can start determining what resources we need and how much resources we need to rebuild that area once we have opened up so, uh, Mariupol, for example. Once the Russians leave, we can have an idea of what we need to move in. So uh, when doing my projects, I use Landsat 7 surface reflectance imagery from USGIS Earth Explorer. I chose the dates May 5th, 2021, about a year before the war began, and May 8th, 2022, about three months after the war has started. I chose these two dates so that we could look at Mariupol before there was any damage done uh, due to the war, and uh, we around the same time period. So if we, we could have a, you know, there wasn't snow, and we could uh, compare the two identically around the same time of the year. From there, the Landsat scenes were clipped to the 15 by 15 miles around Mariupol, Ukraine. So for this project, uh, I used Envy. And I went ahead and decided to break down into four classes. Water, which would uh, represent blue, vegetation as green, artificial surfaces as red, and bare soil as gray. This was the most difficult part of this project for me for an introduction to remote sensing, as uh, there were a lot of late nights thinking I was marking artificial surfaces as red and then running the program, and there were just fields of what I knew was agriculture or wheat and it would just all look like artificial. Um, this also has to do with that this imagery was taken off GIS and the Landsat imagery was 30 meters by 30 meters. So it's really hard to get good pixel sizes to work with. Uh, for the training samples, there were 700 and 900 training pixels per class. And then for depth validation samples, I used 50 pixels per class, giving me an overall accuracy of May 5th, 2022 of 93% and May 8th, 2022 of 84.7%. So this is the result of that machine learning uh, focus on the Azovstal steel plant. 
So this is the 2021 map, and you can see with red being artificial, there's a lot of infrastructure and buildings around this area. And then after two months of sustained bombing campaign, you can see a lot of this artificial surface has been destroyed and turned back into bare soil or mixed in with the bare soil, giving us this change. Looking at this data, we determined that there was a 10.7% change from artificial soil or artificial pixels from the 2021 data to uh, bare soil in the 2022 data. So about 10.7% of that artificial surface was damaged into bare soil. For um, my conclusions and discussions, I believe that Landsat can be used to detect regional damages, but not at building scale. This just goes back to using uh, Landsat imagery from USGIS. The pixels are just too large, and I couldn't get to specifics to get a better representation of, of the damages within the area. So in the future, um, if this project is continued by another student, uh, they would need to use higher resolution imagery. And that when, when the war is over, we can compare that imagery and what we get from this Landsat data with the results from UN's data about the damage within the area to see how accurate it is. So this is the end of my presentation. Does anybody have any questions about anything covered? So are you asking, like, did I use the classification method? Oh, yeah, so it was, Land, it was Landsat. So again, this was an introduction to remote sensing class. I'm no means an expert on this. I wish I was because it's very interesting. But I used Landsat 7 uh, data, and um, I wish I could go back and tell you which bands I use, but I don't remember at the moment. So I can send you the data if you're curious. Uh, just give me your email afterwards and figure it out. Cool. Sir? First, uh, thank you for your service. No, oh, thank you for your support. Yes, sir. So the question was, um, how, how did I validate my samples using pixels? And so when I was using my validation samples, I was using known pixels compared with like Google Earth or around the same time imagery to know that I was using on a like a road or infrastructure or soil. And so that's what I use for my validation sample. So yep. any other questions? Yes. Between, oh yeah, um, we're looking at this. I didn't really look at the veg. Oh yeah, the, que the question was, is there any noticeable change in the vegetation? And I didn't focus much on the vegetation, but because uh, my I was looking at uh, damage to buildings and infrastructure, but looking at the change analysis, um, vegetation, about 23.2% of the vegetation was changed to bare soil between 2021 and 2022, so yeah. So, and that could also be not just damage from the war, but just the amount of moving, how much min weapon and equipment is moving around this area and just destroying uh, the vegetation within the area. I mean, uh, that would be something that we'd have to look at more with better imagery, I think. Cool. Thank you for the question. Anything else? Talk about anything you want. You mentioned that there was an opportunity for the student to continue the project. Is, it, is there available imagery through other satellites, either commercially or otherwise, that Yeah, so the question was uh, regarding if a, a future student looks at this project and does more, will there be better imagery available? And what imagery? Is that kind of what you kind of, well, yeah? Well, it's just something already existing on a different satellite package that could go. Okay. You have to target a special mission to, to Okay, yeah, so does imagery already exist for this, for this project? And yeah, it does. So uh, I gave this presentation last week to a bunch of other remote sensing students, and there's a company within the uh, presentation also doing something called uh, Maxar, and they have imagery of this area um, down to the centimeter. And I remember they did their presentation before I did mine, and they were showing imagery of Mariupol. And was like, man, I wish I had this a year ago because this looks really good. And uh, so, I mean, their stuff just blows this out of the water, to be honest. So, hey, Maxar, if you want to do a project on this, you know, go for it. Well, if nobody else has any questions, thank you guys for your time and thanks for coming.